at that point we were all riding high, yeah. Um, and I think it was a natural progression for the band. I mean, we'd, we'd made an incredible fan base at that point. Um, things were really looking up. Um, through the demos that we'd done for Art and Illusion and new material that was coming through, we'd generated a lot of interest. We'd, we'd got, you know, uh, as I say, you know, serious management interest and, and, and you know, the, the major labels were looking our way. Um, and it should, it should have been the big, it should have been the kickoff point. It should have been the real springboard. Um, and really, the, the events that that followed. I mean, I think we're still all really confused about what happened afterwards. You know, I mean, no, no sooner had we signed to, to to hit and run that it seemed that all of the engines stopped running. I mean, there are plenty of recording studios and at that particular time, plenty of extremely good producers and engineers we could have worked. So we weren't disadvantaged by going up to, to Liverpool. It got us away from home, so we were all together staying, uh, I think it was in a bed and breakfast. And that gave us a great sense of band, something that we didn't have, for example, when we did the Virgin album or X11. We weren't living together, we didn't stay together because it was recorded in London. Apart from some of the times when we were at Jacobs, but certainly when the mixing stage, we weren't together. Whereas the Art and Illusion, we were all away from home. We didn't have mobile phones in those days. So we were, you know, we were working together as a unit. And Gil Norton was, uh, you know, was, was a very good producer. I mean, I'm not quite sure he really understood us or, but, um, but it worked. But, I and mean, we were all very happy with the album. Well, when we went up to Amazon, it was quite funny because we were in a rehearsal studio and this chap called Gil Norton wandered in, who we didn't really know a lot about. He listened to us and he clearly didn't know anything about proggy music either. Um, and it was, well, it was just chalk and cheese in a room together. But he did, as we then learnt, have a background in putting together music that was quite aggressive, quite hard. Um, and he was willing to give us the benefit of the doubt about playing it in a funny time signature. But what was... So he, he was very good. He was very enjoyable to work with. Um, he was quite adamant about his views. He didn't understand Blue Powder Monkey, so we didn't do it. That was it. He understood. He said, we've got something else. So we quickly said, oh, you know, this is how First New Day goes. Right, we'll do that. So that had to be built there and then into a track, really. And it went on and be Blue Powder Monkey was saved for another day. And it's always been a bit of a tricky track because we changed it and changed it, as you know, as time went on. Um, but I think everyone's got fond memories of working with him because he was very straight, but you knew where you were. But um, he also, he tried to travel with us to understand where, where we were. I remember when we did Crab, he just said, I do not understand what this is about. And I said, well, it's a bit of something that's about 15 minutes long, and we just lumped two bits together, a bit like Beethoven's Ninth Adagio, and um, you get what you get. And so he recorded it, and made it loud, and that was fine. Gil was, 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 is, you know, uh, an amazingly creative character. Um, we went in there with our songs, and we, you know, we were a young band still, you know, and uh, we had our ideas, we knew roughly how we wanted them to sound. But what Gil managed to do was organise the energy that we had into something you could hear. Um, and he wasn't, you know, he was an impartial observer you know, of everything that was going on around him. So he wasn't, you know, particularly a vocalist, you know, uh, uh, producer or a guitarist producer, which so often you find. He was a very much a holistic man. He, he could hear the whole thing. And, he, and he, I think he really did manage to get out of Art and Illusion what we were looking for, you know, was, and more. I think it sounds pretty good. Um, as a person who played the bass on it, I think he recorded the best sounding bass on any of our albums. Um, it really does... Um, Give that bang that I like to see in there. The album got some support and it made the made the charts. It went um, went in at eighty eight, went up to eighty three, and then the distributor went bust that week, which was a bit unfortunate. Uh, it was pinnacle. Um, it, it 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 maintained our profile. I mean, it increased our profile. It was the first thing with Andy. It put us on the map. It certainly got very good reviews. Um, 
by, I mean, I think certain magazines like Kerrang! and so we say Music Week, for example, found the move to writing more compact commercial songs uh, to their liking. So it certainly was critically uh, successful. Commercially, I mean, I, I, can't, I couldn't tell you the sales figures, but I mean, certainly it was as successful as anything we'd done before. And I think First New Day personally travels up to now and probably beyond. I mean, I think it's a wonderful song. It's one of the best songs I think we've done. Art and Illusion, I think, holds up particularly well because it's a studio album. It's particularly well recorded. I think our relationship with the producer, although it wasn't over a particularly long time, it was quite a short period, was effective. I think we worked well together. I think he got the best out of us and those tracks at that particular time. So. I mean, I don't have it. I mean, some of the songs aren't perhaps some of my all-time favourites, but then there's a couple on there which I think are absolutely fantastic. So I think it, you know, it's very different to a lot of the other albums. I mean, I suppose you can trace the link from that to the to the Virgin album. Um, but I think it's uh, I think it's very good. And First New Day, I would say, was a was a standout track. Yeah. There are elements of the Art and Illusion album which I think sound more like a band and better than the later X11 album. Um, and again, it's the thing we're now looking at going forward with the band, is to make sure that we get that thing that's been there from the very early days, that sort of punk stroke metally edge that is also proggy at the same time. And that's really what Twelfth Night Music has always been about. 